today we're, ta we're talking about two important contributions of ancient Greece. One is the Grecian urn. The other is the pedestal on which it sit stands or sits. This is an example of a Grecian urn, and this would be a pedestal on which it would stand. This, if it's small, is a pedestal, and if it's large, it's a column. Many contributions, or many of our, many things in our life today came from ancient Greece. Our sense of style is largely due to the ancient Greece, Greeks, and they call that classical. The first thing that we're going to discuss are the vases or urns. The urns were made with red and black and they are symmetrical. Symmetrical means that if you drew a line down the center, it would be the same on both sides. They had various patterns or designs that they made. One of the more important ones is called the Greek key. And it's this pattern right here, which is a square that goes into a square. The Grecian urns were narrative urns, meaning that they told a story. And today we're going to make an urn that is symmetrical, and yours will tell a story also. Because the ancient Greeks believed in gods and goddesses, many of them, then you will think of a god or a goddess and their story, and you will make what I'm going to call an ancient cartoon on your vase. Along with your vase, you're going to pick a pedestal. Again, a pedestal is a short column. A column you see many places in front of a big, sturdy, old bank, in front of a colonial home in the South. There are three kinds of columns. The simple one is called the Doric column, D-O-R-I-C. The Doric column is very simple on the top. The top is called the capital. It's very simple on the shaft. The middle part is called the shaft, and the bottom part of the column is called the base, and if it could be called the plinth also. There are three kinds of columns. This one is called the Doric. It's the most simple. The next kind of column is called the ionic. An ionic column I remember because it looks like a capital I. At the top, it has the top of a capital I, and at the bottom, it has the bottom part, just like if you were making an I in English. You'll see these lines on here on the shaft of the column. The lines are called fluting. They would it make indentations that were V-shaped, in each, where each of these lines was. On an ionic column, you could have it plain, the shaft could be plain, or it could be fluted, which means that it's carved in lines straight down. So this is an ionic column. You'll always know it because it has a scroll and the, like the top of an eye at the top and the bottom. The last column is called Corinthian, and it's very fancy. The capital of the Corinthian column has acanthus leaves, and the base of the column also has acanthus leaves, and most Corinthian columns were fluted because they were very, very fancy, 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 and they had a top part on there also. You're probably looking at these columns and going, wow, the columns that I see are always white. That's true. 
When I was growing up, we learned that all the columns were white in ancient Greece, but we learned something incorrectly because now archaeologists have found bits of paint from archaeological sites that they've been digging, and in the deep crevices, the the indentations in the pottery and the clay and the statues, they found little bits of color. So all of the statues, all of the columns, all of the pedestals, were all of the vases, all around in ancient Greece were brightly colored. So this is more indicative of what the what the columns looked like on their buildings rather than as we picture them now as white or alabaster. The first thing that we're going to do is to make our vase. And remember, it's symmetrical. And I'll, well, I'm going to pick this back up. I'm going to tell you the story. For many years, People thought that this vase was a myth, uh, and it's about the Amazon women. There were a bunch. There were a group of warrior-like, very tall, blonde-headed, blue-eyed uh, warriors in ancient Greece. They were supposed to be uh, children of a god and a goddess. And they went all over ancient Greece and the surrounding areas, and they were very fierce fighters. Everybody, in to, in, when they saw this vase, they went, oh, this is the story of the Amazon women. And they rode on horseback. They had long blonde hair, and they were very gifted with spears and bows and arrows and horseback riding. Then they went across the sea, and they, because they were driven out of ancient Greece, they went across the sea, and they went into the land across the sea. Well, everybody thought that this was just a myth. But one archaeologist said, huh, because in Mongolia, they found a grave site with very tall people, the bones of very tall people, and uh, the artifacts in there were still, because the land is pretty cold, the, uh, the clothing and things that were buried with the bones were still intact. So they went around Mongolia to see if they could find any blue-eyed or blonde-haired Mongolians. And they, then they would take their DNA and compare it with the DNA that they could get from the skeletal remains that they found in the gravesite. Sure enough, they found some Mongolians that were blue-eyed. They were taller than most Mongolians, who are not a very tall people, traditionally. And they found one with blue eyes and blonde hair. So they got the DNA from that person and compared it with the DNA from the gravesite. And sure enough, they found out that the Amazon women were not just a myth. It was a true story. And it was found on this vase, which is now in the, the National Museum in London. And you'll find a lot of ancient Greek artifacts in London. That's a long story, and Greece isn't so happy about that. But that's the story of the Amazon women. I made two vases with traditional patterns. You can see this swirl, which is one. Here is the Greek key. Down here is a simple triangle, which is, represents mountains. And then this was fluted. The Grecian urns had not always, but many times had handles on both sides. It was easier to carry. Sometimes the handles were at the side. Sometimes the handles were at the top. Sometimes the handles were different shapes, but they were always symmetrical except for the story in the center. That's the only thing that 
makes it not symmetrical 100%. I call these narrative urns ancient cartoons because they tell a story in just a very few pictures, just like the cartoons that you might have seen at one time in a newspaper strip. In three or five different pictures, they tell a whole story, just like this vase tells the whole story in very few pictures. Before we begin to make our vase, you're going to need a pencil, an eraser, a ruler, a black sharpie, markers, and patience. You're going to need to measure because they did everything by measurement. The Greeks were very precise in their art and very precise in their architecture. Our Western civilization is based in many ways on the ancient Greeks. We're going to begin with the vase. To make the vase, you can make either a tall vase or a short vase. I do not care. It's your choice. We're going to use the same procedure for either type of vase. You can Later, we're going to make a column or a pedestal. You may use whatever kind of pedestal you want, a Doric, an Ionic, or a Corinthian column. You're going to get a piece of paper, and you're going to fold it long ways in half. We call that hot dog because it's like a hot dog. It's long and skinny. Let's put that down. I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to put it at the top and draw a line underneath, just like that. I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom, just like that. And I'm going to do the same thing on the side. So now, you have a big rectangle. When we draw the vase, we want both sides to be exactly the same. So we're only going to draw half the vase based on this. I'm going to put my ruler down one time and draw a line lightly and then two times. And I'm only going to draw two inches in. So I'm going to put my line on two inches and I'm going to put a dot right here. Do you see that dot? That's going to be where we make the top of our vase. I'm, from the very corner to that dot, I'm going to draw a line, just like that. At the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my, but only one ruler wide. I'm going to put it right here at two inches. And I'm going to put a dot right here. Do you see that dot? Okay. Then I'm going to draw a line to the corner. Oops, that's a very squiggly line. Didn't use my ruler. Put your ruler up against the pencil line, the pencil, and use your ruler to make the straight line. So here's what my vase is going to look like so far. Then I'm just going to round the corner like this, and I'm going to round the corner just like this. You see the shape of the vase starting to take hold? I'm going to make just a line right here and a line right here, another rectangle, and I'm going to make a handle. Remember, we're just making one side of the vase because we're going to trace over the lines 
and the graphite, which is at the end of the pencil, it's not lead, it's graphite. When you press down hard, um, it will transfer to another sheet of paper. So here's the outline of my vase. Now, here's a trick that artists use to make something look more three-dimensional or to have depth to it and not be real flat. Instead of drawing a line straight across, you dip it a little bit. You see how you dip it down a little bit in the center. And you would do the same thing here. See how you dip it? And you would do the same thing here. All three lines are going to be parallel because they all dip the same amount. At the bottom and the top, that looks kind of peculiar, but here's what we're going to do. On the back, it's going to round around as much on the top of the line as it does on the bottom. And that will be the opening of our Grecian urn at the top. At the bottom, we're going to bring it down the same amount that we did at the top. And that's our Grecian urn. I'm going to erase a couple of lines now so that you're able to see it a little bit better. Do you see half our urn? Okay. Now, I'm going to fold it in just like this, and I don't think you're going to be able to see this, but I press down hard enough so that I can see the lines through my paper, and I'm going to trace over my lines. If you're going to draw anything that you want it to be the same on both sides, draw a geometric shape, either a square or a rectangle or something like that, and then make your rounded edges from there. There's half my vase. Now I'm going to open it up. Ta-da! There's my vase. How about that? Okay, so that's my base that I'll cut out. Now, you are going to round down your lines for any designs that you want to put on your vase, like that. And they're all going to round down the same amount of space. They dip down a little bit in the middle, like that. You can make it as complicated as you want. Or as simple as you want. I'm going to leave this space open so that my story can go in here. The characters or the story was told in almost, not quite, but almost um, stick figure like forms. They had a little bit of fatness to them, thickness to them, but not too much. And again, the background was in reds and the artwork was in black and it's called red and black. Although the red was not bright red, the red was more what they call a terracotta. It was a brown red, which we will get by mixing red and, and orange and yellow together. <clears throat> For, I told you that the Greeks were very precise in their patterns. So even if you're not making a pattern that has squares in it, you're going to draw the squares first so that, yep, and you start at the center and you go the same amount on one side as the other and then go out one side and then out to the other. <coughs> As I told you, the Greek keep is a real important symbol in Greek society, 
and it's made like this. It's just one line up, one line over, one line down halfway, one line over, up, around, down. I'm going to color it in a little bit so that you can see what it looks like. And each of these squares will have this pattern in it, just like that. To color your vase, you're first going to put yellow down. <clears throat> I'm not going to do any more. There are lots of patterns on a website called Duxter, D-U-C-K-S-T-E-R. <clears throat> they have a sheet of ancient Greek patterns. I've colored that all in yellow. And now I'm going to color the red over it. And you're thinking, well, red and yellow makes orange. Why don't you just use orange, Miss J? No, don't want to do that, because then it'll be too much. So, there's that, but I'm not finished. I'm going to go back over it with my yellow. And that kind of blends it in together. Really messes your yellow up, though. The tip looks really black, so the next time you use it, you have to clean it off really well before you use it. Most of mine have black tips on them. I do this a lot. Just like that. You're not going to do, you're going to draw everything first with pencil. Once you've drawn it with pencil, you're going to go over all of your lines with black Sharpie. You're going to go over all your lines with black Sharpie. You can put as many patterns on there as you want or as few. This is your vase. Decide on a god or a goddess and their story, and in just a few characters and pictures tell me the story of your god or goddess right here on the vase or the urn and it needs to be just a few pictures to tell the story i colored this in this would be the inside of the vase which was very dark <clears throat> That's how you make a vase or an urn, a Greek urn. Okay, remember, a Doric column is the same on both sides, just like your Grecian urn. And it has a very simple top to it and a very simple bottom. Just as we did with our vase, I took my ruler and I measured three inches. And I made a box. One, two two widths down because the Doric capital or the top of the column was deeper than one ruler. So here's one ruler wide and here's two rulers wide. And the same is here. Here's one ruler wide, here's two rulers wide. So I made this rectangle first and then I just curved the edge out to the edge of the paper. That's your Doric. For your Ionic, I made the rectangle, just like I did with the Doric, and then I put fluting in there, or I drew these lines about the same amount of space. If it's not exact, don't worry about it. And then up at the top, I drew a swirl that went around and cut off that corner at the top and at the bottom. I traced over it, just like I did on our vase, and then when you opened it up, it's just like this. You go, ta-da! And there's your ionic column. And you can see, before I did anything else, I went over every line with the black Sharpie before I colored everything in with my markers. 
And then on the Corinthian, these leaves are called acanthus leaves. They're big. They're not small leaves. But you could make your column top, which is the capital, and bottom, which is the base. You could make it with any type of leaf that you would like, knowing that the acanthus leaf is the one that the ancient Greeks used. Once you have made your column or pedestal and you have made your base, then you're going to take your markers and you're going to decide what colors you want. You know that your base is going to be red and black. And you can see here that I left, I went yellow and orange here because I didn't want it as dark. I wanted yellow and orange here. I went yellow all over. I left the sun yellow. Then I went orange all over and then I went yellow again. Here I went red and orange to make it really dark. And down here, bright red. On your columns, usually the capital of the column and the base of the column were the same color. The shaft of the column was a different color from the capital and the base of the column. I think you're going to really do a great job with these with this project, and I look forward to seeing what you do what, what you do with it. Remember, if you want to see some more Greek patterns from ancient Greece, go to Duxter. Dot com, I believe it is, and you'll be able to and click on Greek and then architecture, and you'll be able to see a lot about Greek columns and narrative Grecian urns. It's been great seeing you today, and I'll see you next time.